Police around the United States are now becoming overwhelmed. And in many cities, police are saying they cannot even do their job. And it's because of some of the different situations that we are putting them through right now. now I'll explain what this is doing. And I also want to read you an email that I received just last night. What this person has to say is shocking because they are now saying that police are not actually protecting citizens. They're doing something completely different. And this right here is not what we need. So I'm gonna break that down in just a moment. Make sure you stick around and watch this entire video. Also share this with your friends and family over on Facebook so they too know what is going on. But all I ask is one thing, it takes two seconds. Go ahead, hit that like button if you enjoy these daily updates. And now let's begin. Okay, so what is happening and why are police officers around the country pretty much being hamstrung? They're being stuck. They cannot do a single thing. The reason is because of all the different issues that we are currently facing, one of which is the protest. USC just canceled their graduation ceremony as dozens of people were arrested. Hey, this was in uh, uh, USC. In Colombia, protesters say they're at an impasse with administrators and will continue their anti-war camp. They are camping on the campus. using There's tents all over the place. But here's the real issue. We have protests. We also have an immigration issue. We also have just, you know, crime in every city. But then on top of all that, you throw this in there, where we are seeing cities defund the police. A blue city mayor defunds police force by more than $8 million to aid migrants. This is Mayor Mike Johnson in Colorado. Now, I want to read you something because again, we have all these different protests. We have the anti-Israeli protests, anti-Palestinian uh, protests. We have uh, an immigration crisis. We have a funding issue. We have people, police officers that just don't want the job anymore because of the dangers associated with it and the pay. But I want to read you this. You're not going to believe what local police and even state police are now doing. Listen to this email that I received last night. This email says, Adam, I am curious if you have heard about what is going on right now regarding police officers. My brother-in-law works in law enforcement and told me last night that they are extremely short staffed. They're having to patrol these protests, but also keep an eye out for the migrants here in Chicago. But what they are not doing, he says, keeping a close eye on the citizens of our city and watching businesses to ensure they are safe. Could you let me know if this is happening in any other cities as well? I am deeply concerned that the police are dropping the ball, not because of them, but because of federal funding and the disaster we continue to face from our border. Now, here's the thing. I've heard about this from other cities as well. I've heard about this in uh, as far as Denver is concerned. Okay, Denver, Colorado, where the police officers are patrolling Home Depot parking lots and the Walmart parking lots and the intersections because that's where migrants are trying to uh, sell a service or a product. And so the police officers have to go and patrol those areas. But while they're patrolling those areas, there are street races over on the highway. There are people that are getting burglarized, right? There are uh, other you know, crimes happening in the city. The police officers cannot patrol that and patrol all the migrants. They just can't do it. They don't have enough police officers, okay? There's not enough funding. They can't hire more. People are leaving the city. Even residents don't want to be there because of the issues that we're seeing that they're facing. This is also happening, you know, this uh, email, uh, the person is living in Chicago or their brother-in-law's from Chicago, right? Chicago is another main one. It's happening all over the place. We have seen this here in the Seattle, Washington area as well, where there were not enough police officers because we did not have enough funding. There were uh, people protesting. This wasn't, this hasn't been just recently. It's been a little bit, you know, you know, years ago, it happened a little bit more, but there were people that were protesting, shutting down city streets, uh, you know, stores closed down, big stores as well. 
Okay, major stores in the Seattle area shut down. Okay, just because it, it was downtown Seattle, it wasn't safe. There wasn't there was no patrolling there. If somebody broke a window, stole something, the police did nothing about it. We see this in San Francisco as well. I see this in LA. It's happening all over the country. But that's the concern is now police officers are pretty much sitting there handcuffing themselves because they can't do a thing. They can't put their hands on a on a person just because they committed a crime, right? They see it, but they can't really do anything. And why would they? Why would a police officer who's making you know five thousand dollars a month go and risk their life for somebody that's stealing five hundred dollars in in inventory, or a group of people that's stealing? from a, a house or from a business. They're not going to do it. And the reason why is it's not worth it to them to risk their life, just them, one person, going up against a, a small or even a large group. Why would they do it? So here's the interesting thing. Police officers are now being told to not necessarily look the other way, but if it's not something that they can really you know, if they can go and apprehend somebody, just let them go. And, and this is happening if if you go and you're driving in your car and let's say you got a police officer in one lane and or even a motorcycle and you go flying past them at 120 miles an hour, if that police officer knows they are never going to catch you, they are just going to let you go. They're not going to go chasing you down the highway because they're going to risk their own life. They're going to risk other people's lives as well. And in the end, what? what, what is it for? If it's not because of a violent crime, they're not going to chase you. They're just going to let you go. So that's essentially what police officers are doing now. They are trying to look at the whole situation. You have protesters. Okay, that could potentially get violent because you got these different groups. You got migrants where, yeah, that could get a little bit violent. But at the same time, in most cases, they're going to be fairly calm. And then you got businesses that are getting ransacked and businesses that are seeing their glass broken and inventories just taken out of there. Well, here's the thing with businesses. You most likely have insurance. You can file an insurance claim. You can get reimbursed for all the stuff you lost, right? But if, for a migrant, how do you get reimbursed for a migrant? You don't. How do you get reimbursed for a protester? You don't. So that's what they're now discussing is these are potentially life-threatening where stealing from a business, eh, you can file an insurance claim. Or if somebody breaks into your house, as long as they're not a threat to you and a violent threat, because yes, somebody breaks in my house, that's kind of violent. It's at least going to get violent. But if they are just, you know, breaking into your house and they're going to steal some jewelry and no big deal, they're going to leave you unharmed, police are like, oh, file a police report. We'll see what we can do. Right? Lock up your home. Right? Board up your windows. That's what we're hearing. That because police do not have enough police officers because of funding, and now they have to kind of you know disperse to different areas, and they are very limited. It's going to put more pressure on the American people, on citizens, on businesses. Here's what I can tell you. It's not going to be good. It's not going to get better. Things are going to get worse. And based off of what we're hearing, based off of what I've read about many cities and states around the United States, we are going to see more funding issues moving forward, likely in 2025. That's when many experts believe things can go from bad to worse is once we decide on the fiscal year 2025 budget. That is when things are going to just break loose. So. We'll see what happens, but as of right now, things are not looking great here in the United States. But let me know, have you seen any of these things or have you seen in person where a police officer is standing there just watching as somebody blows through a business and steals everything because they know they can't do anything or they don't want to risk their life or other people's lives around them. Let me know if you've seen it because I know I have. So. You can let me know down in the comment section below, but as of today, that is what we know. So again, thank you guys for watching. Consider subscribing, and I'll see you guys on the next one.